on the bass guitar, I'm using a trillion bass. And if you're using, you know, an alchemy bass or one of the sculpture synth bass, that's totally fine as well. Um, I will add uh, an EQ on this bass. So something I haven't added yet. So I'll add it from fresh right now. And on the EQ, what I'll do is a low cut. Just, I don't, you don't want to cut out a lot of lows, but just probably 25 hertz, maybe um, a low, a, a steeper slope. So 18 decibel slope at 25 hertz. And you can see this isn't really affecting my bass sound when I play it. If I just solo the bass. A lot of the frequencies are, are in this area. The lowest is right around here, which is about 40 hertz. So I don't want to cut these out, but I do want to just clean up the, the bottom low end, just so that's not affecting any of the compression at all. If you don't clean up the low ends on your tracks, what will happen is it's just those signals are still affecting your, comp your compressor. If you add a compressor, the compressor is going to want to increase those signals. So if you're not cutting those out, your your compressor is still going to try to have those increased. Cool. So we will X that right now. And I'm going to move this uh, EQ to the top of my logic chain here. This is your kind of effect chain that will grow the more effects you add. And it's good to have your EQ to be the first, most of the time, the first um, plug-in because you you want um, any signals you take away or you increase you want those to be at the top so if you have a compressor next it increases the signals you want to uh, increase the next mix we're going to uh, mix effect we're going to apply to the bass is a multi-band compressor and a multi-band compressor is is, a, is like a compressor but um, multi-band means like you can choose the bands of frequencies, for example. This band, this frequency here, is just affecting these frequencies, and I can um, increase those frequencies. I can decrease them. So it's an EQ in that way. But when these frequencies hit this area, it's going to, this is saying, inside the frequencies of 1600, bump them up and compress them. Um, but I'm not what I want to add here is this low end multiband compression. And so what I'm going to do is side chain my bass guitar to my kick. And this what side chain means is you're connecting your kick drum to um, your bass drum or sorry your bass guitar. or you can you could sign side chain anything. You could connect two instruments together. And what this means uh, is very popular to sidechain a kick with another instrument that also shares those same frequencies. Like a kick drum is all in the is most in the low end, right? And also the bass guitar is in there. And so you want the whenever the kick hits, you really want that space for the kick, so people can really hear the kick. But when the bass guitar comes in. You also want people to hear the bass guitar, but you don't want to take away those frequencies to the kick. And so what side chaining does is whenever the kick happens, the bass guitar will just get a little bit quieter. So you can hear more of the kick than you can hear the bass. And so we're going to do that right now. And how we're going to do that is using a multiband compression. So we've isolated this low end signal and inside compressor, we're going to sidechain. So up here you can see sidechain and you can choose your instrument, um, whether your instrument, well, we're gonna look for the kick and your kick might be an audio signal. So it would be in audio. Um, my kick is uh, an instrument, so, and I've named it kick. So it's right here. Basically you wanna come in here and find whatever you'd like to sidechain side with. To have that locked in, we want to go to external here and we want a really fast attack and a really fast release. And then I'll show you it in action if we, let's just solo the kick in the bass and let's turn this on. And we will really bring down the threshold. So you'll notice 
when you hear the kick, so this is the bass signal that's, that's coming up here. This is the bass signal. And then when the kick happens, it's pushing this down. So we can, to make a, a drastic, um, dramatic kind of uh, example, let's really lower this and lower the threshold and you'll really hear the bass duck. You'll hear it get a lot quieter. So it's cutting all this bass signal when that kick happens. And you can really hear that in the bass. If I turn it off, here's what it sounds like. So the bass is just, the bass is doing the bass thing and the kick is doing the kick thing. Now when I turn this on, they're working together. So it's providing a lot more space for the kick. So I'm not gonna do as drastic of a side chain as, I, as an example. I might bring this to negative 15 and the threshold. The more threshold we bring up to like negative 10, the bass guitar won't sound, um, sometimes it can sound too much if you, if you really increase the threshold. So it comes down to taste now. So that's good, I, I like it there, negative 21, and I'm doing a negative 34. I could put a bit of reverb on the bass guitar a little bit just to see what that sounds like. So a lot of reverb sounds like this. Just a little bit to put it in the same room as the other instruments. And now with the drums, sol both soloed. So that's sounding good. Moving on. I'm going to take a look at the guitar next, the electric guitar. 